This is a story about a German girl named Lisa who travels by train with her mother and brother to her new foster family in the small city of Moking, Germany, just before World War II. However, on the train, her younger brother dies. They bury the boy, but one of the grave diggers leaves behind a book. Lisa picks it up and continues on her journey. Lisa eventually makes it to Moking and the foster family, the Hubermans. The husband, Hans, is a soft-hearted painter who loves to play the accordion, while the wife, Rosa, is a feisty woman who enjoys cussing. Lisa is very nervous when she first enters their house, and she consistently has nightmares of her deceased brother. However, Hans stays with Lisa through the night, and they begin to form a special bond. After discovering her book about grave diggers, he begins teaching her to read. Lisa begins helping her mother with their laundry business and she collects and delivers the laundry to the rich houses in the area. She becomes particularly interested in the mayor's house because of the large library of books. The mayor's wife even lets Lisa read in the library when she likes. In her spare time, Lisa enjoys playing soccer with the other kids. Rudy, an athletic boy who has a crush on Lisa, befriends her and they participate in mischief, like stealing. But times begin to get harder for the Hubermans as the country's internal conflict with the Jews escalates into World War II. Hans is getting less work as a painter, and Rosa's laundry business is losing customers. Liesl is particularly hurt that the mayor's wife cannot continue to be her mother's customer. Despite the mayor's wife, Liesl begins breaking into the mayor's house and stealing books. One day, the Hubermans are visited by a stranger named Max, a Jewish boxer who's escaping persecution. He also happens to be the son of a man who saved Hans's life during World War I. The Hubermans take Max in, hiding him in the basement. At first, Lisa is afraid of Max, but they talk and become friends. Life becomes stressful for the family as they continue to hide Max. During his time in the basement, Max begins to dream and starts writing and illustrating on blank pages from Mein Kampf. He shares this with Lisa and she loves them. Max eventually leaves, fearing that he has endangered the family enough. Soon, a trail of Jews, nearly dead, walks through the town. Han offers a piece of bread to one of the passing Jews and both get punished for it. Hans's punishment is enrollment in the army, much to the outcry of his wife and Lisa. Hans's job in the army is to work with the cleanup crew. He does a good job clearing away debris, but gets injured in a truck accident. He is sent home with a broken leg. Lisa is happy to see Hans. As the sight of the Jews walking through town becomes more and more common, she also starts scanning the crowd to see if she can see Max. Although her efforts are initially unsuccessful, she does see him and they hug. However, she is pushed aside and Max is whipped before continuing his walk. The mayor's wife meets Liesl and tells her that she knows about the stealing from her library. Instead of punishment, she gives Liesl a book with blank pages and tells her to write a story. Liesl spends each night writing in the basement. One night, as Liesl is writing in the basement, the town gets bombed and all of the people, including the Hubermans and Rudy, are killed. Liesl is the only survivor. After discovering that her family and friends are killed, Lisa is stricken with grief. In the end, Lisa is raised by the mayor and his wife and grows up to have a family of her own. First, this is a story about death. Death occurs throughout the story and ultimately defines many of the characters. The opening death of Lisa's brother fixates in her mind and dreams, often haunting her for weeks and months. Even the death of Max's father, Hans's old war friend, has a great influence on Hans as he learns the accordion and takes in Max, a Jew, during a highly volatile time. This story also discusses the power of words and language. Readers see the rise of Liesl through just a simple act of reading. Initially, written words separated Liesl from the world, but after she learns to read, she becomes a part of a bigger world. From her reading comes her writing and it's when she begins authoring her own life that she finds her true power. More than that, death is literally telling this story. The tone and voice, though contemporary, is personable. The narrator is the personification of death, whether it be a grim reaper, angel of death, or demon. Readers are learning the story of Liesl and her family through an omnipotent narrator who is both supernatural and spiritual. Through this insight of death, by death, readers learn that death is inevitable and that we are all on its schedule. 